Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. After melding Brissella last week, I wanted to keep melding more cards, so today we're combining Urza Lord Protector with the Might Stone and Weak Stone to form Urza Planeswalker, which can activate loyalty abilities twice each turn rather than once, can plus two giving artifacts, instants and sorceries a two mana discount and gain two life, can a plus two draw two cards and then discard a card, can also make a pair of 1-1 one -one soldier tokens, can a minus three to exile target null and permanent, or finally work its way up towards a minus 10, where artifacts and planeswalkers we control gain indestructible until end of turn, and we get to destroy all null land permanents, and we can already pull that off on the second turn after controlling Urza planeswalker. So an incredibly powerful planeswalker if we can combine it, and we're playing this in a blue-white artifact control shell. We've got Urza as our actual commander, a 3 mana 2-4, giving artifacts, instants and sorceries a 1 mana discount, and then it costs us 7 mana to combine Urza with the Might Stone and Weak Stone after controlling both of them. Now, the Might Stone and Weak Stone is just one of the many cards in the 99, so we're by no means guaranteed to have it in each opening hand, but we can potentially tutor it up, and we've got lots of cards to find specific artifacts or legendary cards to increase the consistency of actually combining it with our Urza Lord Protector. And then the Might Stone and Weak Stone is pretty good in and of itself, can draw two when it enters, or give a creature minus five, minus five until end of turn, and then it can tap to make two colorless mana that, similar to a Power Stone, cannot be spent to cast non-artifact spells, so we can still cast our artifacts or activate various abilities, such as the 7 mana ability to melt Urza with the Might Stone and Weak Stone. And then I've split up the deck into a few different categories to help with the deck breakdown. Of course we've got our Might Stone, then we've got all the various tutor effects to find the Might Stone and Weak Stone in the first place. We've got lots of ramp artifacts, because we are trying to get to potentially 7 mana to meld Urza with the Might Stone and Weak Stone. Then we've got a bunch of spot removal, like any good control deck should have. We've got plenty of sweepers as well to keep the board clear and to leverage our many planeswalkers. Then we've got our fair share of counter spells as well and then a bunch more card draw effects to potentially complement this control game plan. And then finally, the miscellaneous section has plenty of planeswalkers that we can activate and try and protect with our sweepers, and then a few more artifact synergies to try and close out the game in case uh, Urza doesn't get there. So that's our deck in a nutshell. Now time for the deep dive, where we've got our various tutor effects to find Might Stone and Weak Stone, Moon Silver Keys, two mana to play, one mana to sacrifice, to search our library for an artifact card with a mana ability or a basic land card. So we don't have to just get Might Stone and Weak Stone, but it's usually what we're going for. Search for Glory can find any legendary card, Saga, or Snow permanent card. So once again, the legendary Mind Stone and Weak Stone will do. Fabricate can find any artifact in our deck. Thalia's Lancers can also search for a legendary card, so it can also find some of our legendary creatures or planeswalkers. And then a War of Invention has Improvise, so we can cast this one at instant speed and potentially tap some untapped artifacts to help pay for it, and then put an artifact on the battlefield. And then taking a look at our ramp artifact, there's a Fabrication Foundry, which is also a way to maybe access the Might Stone and Weak Stone if it ends up in our graveyard. We've got our traditional two mana ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mind Stone, Solar Transformer, and the Iron Crag. So that's quite a few nowadays. We've got a Midnight Clock, which can eventually refresh our hand. File of Galadriel can also potentially draw extra cards or gain additional life. Same with the Celestus. And then a Warren Power Stone making two mana is also quite good. Then taking a look at our spot removal, we've got Swords to Plowshares. Fateful Absence and Get Lost can hit both creatures and planeswalkers. Get Lost can also destroy enchantments. Loran, an answer to opposing artifacts and enchantments. Aegis can also exile an opposing creature. And then Fractured Identity is a lot of fun, as you get to essentially steal an opposing permanent after exiling it. And then the White March is also quite flexible. And then we've got plenty of sweepers, Cyclonic Rift and Rivers Rebuke as mass bounce spells. And we've got the flexibility of potentially casting a 2-mana Cyclonic Rift. Then plenty of 4-mana Wrath Effects, Day of Judgment, the classic Wrath of God and the Uncounterable Supreme Verdict. Sunfall exiles all creatures and leaves us with an incubator. And then we've got the Portal to Phyrexia at 9 mana, which will make the opponent sacrifice 3 creatures. And then we can also use it as a win condition, reanimating a creature turn after turn. Then our counter spells include Wash Away, of course, as a one mana counter for an opposing commander. Three Steps Ahead has multiple modes, including potentially copying our artifacts. Reprieve can send a spell packing and draw card. A memory Lapse will put it on the top of the opponent's library. 
Got the classic Counterspell and Mana Drain, which is especially good in an Artifact deck where we can use all that colorless mana we generate. And then a Dovin's Veto for non-creature spells and No More Lies, also quite good in the early game. And then we've got a bunch more card draw, including Mishra's Bauble, which combines with our fetch lands to maybe let us shuffle if we don't like our top card, or we can have a peek at the opponent's library. Then there's Brainstorm, also quite good with our fetch lands, as we can put unwanted cards back on top and then shuffle them away afterwards, so not a card you typically want to cast as soon as possible. And Braided Net can tap down an opposing non-land permanent for a few turns, and eventually we can craft it to draw additional cards. Thirst for Knowledge can draw three and then ideally discard one artifact at instant speed. Urza's Command has a lot of modes, can make Power Stones to make more mana, maybe a Karnstruct to start applying pressure, but can also draw. The One Ring is a very powerful card draw artifact that will protect us after we cast it for one turn. We've got a Lorien Revealed, can be Island Cycled, also getting our non-basic islands, or we can cast it to draw three cards, especially once we get a discount from Urza. Thought Monitor will also get a nice discount through Affinity for Artifacts, so can potentially cast it for just a single blue mana with enough Artifacts in play, and then a 2-2 Flyer that draws two cards. And finally, Sphinx's Revelation can also be a nice mana sink if we generate enough mana through our author Artifacts and the discount from Urza, can gain X and draw X cards at instant speed. And then our miscellaneous section includes Simulacrum Synthesizer, which can generate an army of Construct tokens, especially good with the World Walker Helm, which can also make additional map tokens whenever we make an artifact token and there's a few of those throughout including the smithy which can make a large soldier token similar to a construct which grows with the number of artifacts we control a metamorph can copy something in play and then we've got plenty of planeswalkers to ferry good to untap our artifacts and lands to generate extra mana we've got hero of dominaria which can draw and then untap two lands to keep up our instants Karn can make constructs with a minus two or can draw additional cards with the plus and minus one. And then a time warp especially good with planeswalkers in play to take an extra turn. And then Ugin gives our colorless spells a two mana discount, can destroy things with a minus three while making spirit tokens with a plus one. And then a cityscape leveler when we cast it and when it attacks can destroy opposing a non-land permanence, giving the opponent a power stone token in return. And then our mana base has the channel lands for added interaction. The Monumental Henge can also activate to maybe find some of our artifacts and legends. And then we've got plenty of blue-white dual lands for mana fixing. A lot of fetch lands as well, which will synergize with our Brainstorm and Mishra's Bauble and provide additional mana fixing. And then we've got a few more utility lands, like the uh, Fomori Vault, which can discard an artifact to dig pretty deep. And Inventor's Fair can also gain life. And I also could have put in the Tutor section, since if we have enough artifacts to enable it, we can also sacrifice it to find our Might Stone and Weak Stone. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, facing Tatiova, Benthic Druid, so blue-green landfall. Our hand's decent. Signet, keep up wash away. Probably won't need it that early. All right, now Halfling makes their legendaries uncounterable, but we do have a Wrath of God to clean up first. Now Lotus Cobra, so yeah, next turn they could already cast Tatiova. And then hopefully we just get to go Signets into Wrath. Glyph Bridge could also be useful as another board wipe. And there's Tatiova. They've already played land for turns, so they don't get any immediate value from the landfall. And this Wrath of God's gonna be pretty devastating. Everything's gone. And next turn we could maybe deploy Urza and keep up some of our instants. As our opponent needs to painstakingly get back to seven mana to deploy their commander now. Planar Genesis can find an extra land. And classic counter spells, not bad either, but we'll get Urza down. And Grow Spiral can put another land in play. Another fetch land, those are good with Tatiova. And then by the time they get to cast it, we'll have our counter spells available. Scoot Swarm's a good one. 
Could bounce it with Cyclonic Rifts. Could also use a Glyph Bridge to keep it sort of contained. So for now, I think we'll just take our turn. Play a two mana Power Stone, keep up Counter Spell. And yeah, with Cyclonic Rift, we can always overload it now too. To send all those tokens packing. Opponent redeploys Tatiova. Yeah, let's use Wash Away. Could have also cast it for the full price, actually, since we get the discount from Urza. Opponent makes one extra Scoot Swarm, but still can't really attack. Alright, and uh, how about a Thought Monitor? Keeping up blue mana. I guess I do need blue mana to cast it, so... I might be Shields down on Counterspell. Which is a little sketchy, but again, with Cyclonic Rift and Glyph Bridge available, I'm not too concerned. And then I could still Brainstorm. Although I don't have a fetch line to go with it, so there's the risk that I kind of Brainstorm lock myself, as it's known. So, let's just play line and pass for now. And uh, we're getting close to casting our Curve Toppers. Opponent casting a Mox Amber, that one's acceptable. Take our turn. And then Portal to Phyrexia would clean up the Scoot Swarm now. So, could try that. Or I could play a leveler, but uh, yeah, portal seems like a clean solution. Opponent could have a counter spell for it too. Wash away, it's only fair. And uh, sure, we'll get in for two. Now Polluted Delta can trigger Scoot Swarm several times, so our opponent's already going to have a pretty scary board. And then they can still play Tatiova, although the Glyph Bridge is going to be pretty brutal here. So we'll send in Thought Monitor. And then play Glyph Bridge. Can also use Buried Ruin to eventually get back Portal to Phyrexia for what it's worth. I'll keep Urza. They can keep a Scute Swarm token, which I can then bounce with Cyclonic Rift if I'd like. And I could just do that now. So Scute Swarm's dealt with. Still have Counter Spell up. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Helga, Skittish Seer, so kind of a creature ramp deck. So finding a sweeper would be good. We have Rebuke as a pseudo sweeper. But for now, Idle plus Teferi is also a good way to make a lot of mana. So I don't think I can turn it down. But yeah, we're gonna see a Mana Elf. So next turn we can play Teferi, plus have access to two mana. And our opponent will untap with Helga. Alright, Lancer is a way to access Mightstone and Weakstone as well. And Bristly Bill can add more counters to Helga before it taps for mana. And a fetch land can add two plus one counters, so two mana. Yeah, this could be bad. We have not found a real board wipe. And if they take out Teferi, I'm not gonna get to uh, cast a rebuke in the first place. And Nylia is next. Alright, so at least the fairy is safe, and next turn I can rebuke, 
to set them back a bit. Although wouldn't be able to keep a mana drain. Yeah, I would have loved to play the Lancers in the meantime, but I think we're just too far behind where I have to rebuke already. And then next turn maybe play the Lancers to get Mightstone and Weakstone, ideally keep up Mana Drain as well, if we draw land for turn. And Ryan lets them play an additional land. And a Giver of Runes for protection. And Pilgrim. Alright, we did find a land, so I can make the play I described. Play Lancers. And keep Mana Drain available. And I will counter Helga. And now we can use the extra Colas mana to cast our Mightstone next turn. Opponent can deal some damage to Teferi if they activate Giver of Runes. So it's not like I'll get close to an ultimate this game, but uh, yeah, Teferi does some good work for us. Alright, so three colorless mana floating. Can I play Mindstone and Weakstone. Maybe taking out an opposing creature, or I can draw two. Feels like I kind of need to draw into another board wipe eventually. So maybe I'll just draw. And then I can also play a smithy to make more creatures. Alright, the fairy hero of Dominaria is not bad either. And then I could still keep up Cyclonic Rift for two mana in the opponent's turn, or ideally wait to overload it. And then I guess Lancers can attack, since I'll get to untap them with the fairy. And then we can still play Smithy. I guess I will be one short of then also playing Teferi. I think Teferi is more important. So I guess there wasn't a real reason to tap the Might Student Weak Sense, as I could have used it to animate Guardian Idol as well. Alright, so still have access to Cyclonic Rift. Opponent replays Helga, that resolves. And build triggers with a fetch land. Growing the Dryad makes sense. So it can attack past the Lancers. So I may want to use Cyclonic Rifts or just jump with the Lancers. Kind of depends if they use Giver Runes proactively or not. Right, they're going to name White here. So had I kept Mindstone untapped, I could have also jumped with Guardian Idol if I wanted to. Could also let the Fairy die. But it is useful in transforming Urza by untapping the Mightstone and Weakstone. So let's just bounce the Dryad. And get to untap. Alrighty, so make some mana, draw some cards. We need to move quickly. Could once again attack with uh, Lancers, but I'm not going to bother. Can tap down the Pilgrim instead. And 
And then we want to play Urza. And we can immediately transform it. And that's going to be good enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Thalia and the Gidrock monster. We have Foundry and Power Stone to make some mana, no blue, so we're pretty far from a War of Invention. I'll take my Mulligan. This is a bit better. Opponent's got uh, Deathrite Shaman, so reason not to put a fetch landing graveyard right away. Although I will need it to cast a Counterspell at the moment. Might prefer to just play the Guardian Idol. Yeah, that seems fine. And this has a good one. So they can potentially make a lot of mana next turn. If they play Thalia on the Gidrock monster, that's also going to be kind of annoying to deal with. So I might just want to keep up Counterspell, and then I cannot play Foundry and do that since I have two colorless sources. So that's a little awkward too here. But that's alright, so we'll just pass. It's just going to be a tapped Overgrown Tomb, so no double trigger with Nissa at least. And Arcane Signet is fine. No need to fight over that. Could also use three steps ahead to make a token copy of Guardian Idol, which is still a way of ramping for us. Not gonna try and animate to block Death Rite since they probably have removal at already. Yeah, could be convinced to copy Guardian Idol. What does it open up for me next turn? I guess it allows me to Fractured Identity Nissa and play a fetch land to enable it twice, two mana floating to play Urza, or I could just keep the fetch land for the opponent's turn to cast a counter spell. Other opponents likely to just remove their own Nissa at that point. So yeah, interesting position. I will probably copy the idol regardless. That works. And then Glyph Bridge could be a board wipe. Although maybe don't need to cast it now. Can play Foundry and keep Counterspell available. Or we could play a Thought Monitor as well here. And then go Shields down on Counterspell. I think I want Counterspell available. It does mean having to fetch to enable Deathrite Shaman. Just take three. And our opponent plays Thalia on the Gidrock monster. So now I can let that resolve and then just cast a Glyph Bridge. I'll let them keep Deathrite Shaman. And Brainstorm's no longer useful now that I've fetched already. Take my turn, cast a Glyph Bridge, could cast a 4 mana bridge if I play Urza first, but that doesn't leave up counter spells, so I'll do this. Our opponent can keep Death Rites. And I'll keep up counter spell as opposed to play anything else out. If our opponent resolves something big, we could also consider letting it resolve to then use Fractured Identity. And our life total is also dwindling, so we'll have to play to the board at some point. Alright, the uh, 5 mana Gidrog monster, pretty good to counter before they get too much value from it. And our deck is not necessarily well equipped to do the same if we try and fractured identity, so I think counterspell makes sense.
And then now we could play Urza and Thought Monitor. And then Bobble. Target the opponent, see what's incoming. Thermorphic. Is there anything else I want to do? Identity on death right seems a little weak. So I'll just uh, pass. Alright. So hopefully they give us a good target for identity or leveler. Mythweaver. Could be good with our own fetch line, I suppose. I don't like to play Mythweaver myself, since alchemy cards are a little bit pushed sometimes. But uh, if our opponent plays it, I guess it's only fair that we get to do the same. So they can fetch a response to Fractured Identity to trigger Mythweaver once again. So our opponent's got all the mana in the world. But now Search for Glory is also a way to access Mindstone and Weakstone. So step one, get my own Mythweaver. Opponent's gonna sort their own creature just to deny me having a Mythweaver. Okay, that's uh, a deal. So we don't get to have our own fun with Mythweaver, but we've got other things we can do. Like search for glory and getting Mindstone and Tweakstone. May as well fetch now to gain more life with search for glory. And then I can still cast it. And I'll just draw two cards. So we are ready to transform Urza next turn. They just used uh, swords to take out their own Mythweaver instead of having it as an answer. Also would have been a nice answer to a leveler, for instance. So our hand's pretty good, but our opponent does get to untap with a lot of mana, so we'll see. And Deathrite can drain for two. I don't think I die to a Crater Hoof. But it's going to be close. Assemble the team can go digging pretty deep. So they can likely access an answer to Urza if that's what they want. It's going to be Thali and the Gidrog. That's acceptable. So nothing seems to be stopping us from transforming Urza next turn. Good swords, Thali and the Gidrog right now, so Urza gets to attack first. And then we can transform. Making sure to tap the Might Stone and Tweak Stone, some of our other colorless sources. This is the legacy of the Thrad. Take out the death rites. And still play Helm. Alright. Urza can minus 10 to ultimate if needed. Can transform the Glyph Bridge as well into the Wonder Glyph. So we've got some decent options available. Ooh, Eerie Ultimatum to return a bunch of stuff from the graveyard is scary. Nissa with a fetch land, Gitrog, Deathrite. Yeah, that was a good one. Although they cannot answer Urza, we can just wrath their board next turn. But the Gitrog monster will draw. 
this and we'll find an alpha elemental. It's going to be a Glissa. Don't mind if they play it here. Alright, so probably going to minus 10 Urza. Opponent's got another land drop left. For a fanatic of Ronas. Okay. So Urza can probably just make some tokens after wiping the board, or we could draw two and discard. And the Henge we can also activate. Keep the memory lapse. Minus ten. I'll end everything to stop you. And attack. I guess I can target my own stuff now that they're indestructible just to make a power stone token. And that will also trigger the World Walker Helm, so that's a pretty neat interaction. Could get back Mishra's Bauble with uh, Ruin, but let's just play Henge. Could activate it now. See what we find. How about a portal to Phyrexia? And then I can still transform the Glyph, getting rid of probably Bauble or maybe a Power Stone. And still have Memory Lapse available. If we don't need to cast it, activate Helm, copy the map. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Maha, so kind of a mono-black control deck. Yeah, should be an okay matchup since we don't play a lot of creatures for them to destroy. This hand could use more ramp, but uh, Teferi can also untap our lands and can look for some ramp artifacts with our Surveil. Yeah, maybe can be picky and say no to the land. Can discard an artifact like Thought Monitor to a Thirst for Knowledge if needed. And our opponent's going to have a look, taking either Thirst or Fateful Absence. So not in a hurry to play Urza, since it's likely just going to get removed instantly. And instead we can Thirst for Knowledge and uh, maybe get the Vault in play. Have to watch out for all those powerful card draw enchantments that you see in black nowadays. Celestus is not one of them. So Teferi into Teferi is the plan, and Day of Judgment was a good top deck, a good answer to Maha, which otherwise forces us to discard if we want to target it on the board. Normally I would be plusing Teferi to make mana, but uh, in this case, I don't mind a minus in case they have an answer to Planeswalker. Get another Wrath. Alright, so we've got the Fairies and Wraths. It's a proven strategy in Magic. But we'll see how it pans out. Yeah, the main concern, again, is one of those Necro enchantments. Which could draw the opponent a lot of cards. For now, we're just going to Day of Judgment. And I wouldn't be able to keep up three steps ahead. Don't worry. It's only a little mist. Arcane Signets. And a Frex and Arena. Alright. Powerful card draw enchantments, although. Not as bad as one of the Necro enchantments would have been. And now a Fractured Identity could be a pretty clean answer to it. Yeah, that seems good to me. Or we could play Teferi, plus it, have three steps ahead available, and then next turn maybe take it out. Could also be fine, actually. And then I'll keep plussing, even though I could minus, since we'll get to untap two lanes now. Sure. Get an extra card. Maybe a source to plowshares. Right. 
So our opponent gets to draw their extra card. And a caged sun. Seems worth countering, would give the opponent a lot of mana here. And not quite as good for me to Fractured Identity, since we're a multicolor deck. Alright, so the fairies keep on plussing. And now might be a good time to Fractured Identity the Phyrexian Arena. So we'll make some mana. Sadly haven't found an artifact to untap yet with the fairy's ability. But we'll survive. And then pass a turn. Not really interested in playing Urza yet. This is every control player's dream. Bunch of mana, counterspell in hand, removal, sweeper, active planeswalkers, and even a Phyrexian Arena that we're borrowing from our opponent. So if our opponent's hand includes a bunch of creature removal, we just want to make it so we don't give them the opportunity to use it, build up our own resources and card advantage until it doesn't really matter anymore that they have a few answers to creatures in hand since we're going to be so far ahead on resources. Can maybe wait to play Urza until we can immediately transform it in case they ever tap out. And uh, our opponent may have disconnected here, which is not too surprising. And next turn can deploy a third Planeswalker. We're drawing basically four cards per turn here. And it's not going to take long for us to find our Mindstone and Weakstone or a Tutor to put it in hand. So take our turn. And besides our Planeswalkers, we have a couple more win conditions we might find along the way. Karn to make Constructs is not a bad way to go about it. There's a Synthesizer to do the same. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Baral and Karizev. So, blue-red spells. We've got Search for Glory to find Mindstone and Weakstone. Lots of counter spells, and then archive to make sure we keep hitting our land drops. We'll give it a shot. Keep flooded strand. And brainstorm was a great reason to hang on to the flooded strand here. So can cast it now, perhaps. Alright, so... Thirst for Knowledge, discarding the Helm seems good, since I don't really need the Helm. How do we feel about Ugin? Maybe a bit ambitious in this matchup. Don't expect it to be great. So let's put back Ugin and a land. And then we can shuffle those away end of turn. Or if we need to cast a Counterspell. Prairie Stream will enter untapped if we get a basic. And as we said, keep an artifact to discard to Thirst. So, could Reprieve, could No More Lies. Pretty happy just Reprieving those for now. And then pass a turn. Opponent also had to discard to hand size there. Could see them replay Baral and Karizaf for now a slide of hand. And a Thunder Tramp Trainer resolves, so we can resolve our thirst. And what does it find? A Aral Crackling Wit. Alright, so now I guess Synthesizer is a reason to hang on to the Helm. Maybe get rid of Portal, which we're pretty far from casting. And then keep the Synergy of Synthesizer plus Helm. This turn, we've got a couple options. 
deploying the Worn Power Stone with Teferi coming up seems worthwhile. So I could go Urza into Power Stone, even though I miss out on a Synthesizer trigger. And then next turn Teferi untapping Power Stone essentially pays for itself. Opponent with a Fiery Inscription. Can attack past Urza. But they're gonna bounce it as well. Alright, that's acceptable. Alright, so... Play to Fairy. That's definitely happening. We'll just plus... Untapping Power Stone and a land. Then I can still play Urza. Play a 2-mana Synthesizer. And then I can either cast another spell or keep up No More Lies. Don't think I need either of those. Keeping up the counter spells a little safer. And then next turn I might be able to search for glory and cast the Might Stone and Weak Stone all at once. That opponent's gonna try and abrade the Synthesizer. Yeah, that's worth fighting over. Our opponent could counter back. They had a Snapcaster Mage but didn't quite have the mana to deploy everything. So yeah, taking a look at the battlefield, if we get to untap next turn I can search for glory. Then get uh, Mind Stone and Weak Stone, cast it, only cost me 4 mana, and then I guess I won't quite be able to transform Urza in the very same turn, but we're getting kind of close. And then with Helm we get to trigger a Synthesizer again, can activate the Helm to copy the token and get ahead, and then next turn maybe transform Urza into the Planeswalker. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Tiamat, so presumably five color dragons. And yeah, counter spells are going to be useful. A one mana wash away to counter a seven mana dragon. For now, we can surveil. March doesn't seem needed, even though it could answer the opponent's ramp artifacts. Don't have a white spell to pitch to it. And our opponent's got an explore anyway. I'll hang on to my fetch land in case of a brainstorm. And then we can try the Worn Power Stone, as our opponent's got the Horde, which can draw when dragons enter, and a Lenor Elves. So, not quite next turn, but they're getting close to casting Tiamat. Next turn I can maybe play Urza and a Celestus and keep up Washaway. But we're likely gonna see some 5 or 6 mana dragon. Nope, it's gonna be the Orb. Another ramp card. And Kyodai. To maybe protect the Lenor Elves. So, play Urza. Play Celestus for two mana. And then I'll still have Wash Away available. So hopefully they just go for Tiamat here. Opponent's gonna draw with a Horde first. Avacyn's Pilgrim is acceptable. And now the a Liberated Primeval. Author Dragons have Ward 2, beginning of the end step. If it was dealt excess damage, make Dragons. Good card, but I don't think I can spend my wash away when I don't have an answer for Tiamat otherwise. We can Time Orb to buy ourselves some time. And now a War of Invention, a way to get our Might Stone and Weak Stone. Okay, so Urza can attack. I can use the Mind Stone and Weak Stone to pay for the ward, and then I'll still have my uh, Wash Away available, so I don't think I need to Time Warp. I can save it for maybe after transforming 
Urza into the Planeswalker. And then cast a War of Invention for five, but it's only going to cost me four additional mana. And pay for the ward. Okay. So our opponent untaps. Hopefully goes for Tiamat. We counter it and then next turn untap. Transforming Urza and taking an extra turn. Kyodai also has an activated ability, getting plus five plus five on ton of turn. Not quite enough for lethal, luckily. And it's gonna be a Rivas opponent. Not going for Tiamat just yet. Now we can actually counter Rith since it wasn't cast from their hand. And I think that's fine here. Just to spend our mana. And then hopefully we'll find another counter spell in the meantime. So Urza could attack, and then I could still technically channel Igancho to take out Rivas. Opponent takes it, and then let's transform Urza. Could time warp first while we still have the discount. How much mana do we have total? Should be enough for a transformation and a time warp. And then what are we planning with Urza? I don't need to remove their stuff right away. I could take up to build towards the minus 10. Even though I guess Kyodai will still make the Lunar Elves indestructible, that's acceptable. So... Yeah, let's activate Urza. And then I can just plus twice. Or maybe plus once. I will not falter. Ramp up production immediately. And then plus one another time. Everything falls into place. Time warp, take an extra turn. And then untap. And then I'm gonna wanna plus and then minus 10. You Found a brainstorm, that's nice with the fetch lanes. So cast a brainstorm. Keep Cyclonic Rift, Cold Steel Heart doesn't seem needed. And maybe Naiganjo can go as well. Fetch those away. And then Urza wants to minus 10. Question is, do I want to metamorph anything? I don't think so. Her opponent's left with an Elves. And uh, can just pass a turn. We have Cyclonic Rift available. I guess maybe there was a reason to keep... I Ganjo to answer the elves if they try and finish off Urza. Now it's kind of silly to have to bounce it with Cyclonic Rift, but I guess it's still worth it here. And then another orb we can counter. And then I will fetch end of turn. Alright, so we got to see our blue-white artifact control deck in action. And yeah, the deck's got enough tutor effects and card draw that we can pretty consistently find the Might Stone and Weak Stone. And once you transform Urza into the Planeswalker, it can often take over games. So a very powerful deck, and if you're a fan of blue-white control or artifacts in general, this might be the deck for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.